Hello and welcome to the Storm Magic How To video series. Here at Storm Magic, we're producing some training videos for our customers and partners to show how to do certain things in the setup and configuration and general operations of our software products. Those software products being SVSAN, our virtual SAN solution, SVKMS, our key management server for encryption workflows, and ArcVault, our video management surveillance solution. My name is Steve Bettison. I'm a technical pre-sales engineer here at Store Magic, and, and today I'm going to be concentrating on SVSAN in VMware. And the purpose of this video is to show you how to deploy a VSA to a, an ESXi host in a two node cluster using the Store Magic plugin. So, as I've mentioned, we're going to be looking at SVSAN on VMware. Uh, we've got a demo lab that we're going to review and do the work in. And today we're going to be looking at how to deploy the VSA from the Storm Magic plugin. And then we'll review, review that setup afterwards. So let's come out of the slides. So what we have on the screen now is we have our, our vSensor environment. We have a two node cluster here. And you can see there, we've already got VSA01 deployed, which is deployed on, on the host one. And you can see there, we've got the Stormagic plugin and various tasks. And we are gonna be looking at deploying a VSA onto this second host. Just a little bit of background as to how the hosts are configured. These are nested, this is a nested environment. So these ESXi hosts are virtual machines. So they're not bare metal, but for the purposes of the demonstration, absolutely fine. What I'm going to draw your attention to here is the storage devices. So we are looking to hand up 120 gig spinning disks uh, in a RAID 5 configuration as the capacity tier. Then have a 20 gig disk for the flash. You can see we have a 50 gig data store one, the local data store. And this is where the hypervisor resides, and this is where we will deploy the VSA. So we've already got VSA on this host, and it's the same on, on host two as well. This is the disk we're gonna present up as the raw device mapping to the capacity tier, and then we've got a 20 gig disk for the cache. Once we've got the storage there, if we drop down to the networking, what we've got is so we can run on a single one gig NIC interface, having all the management and iSCSI and mirroring traffic going down one interface. But we recommend having more than that, uh, having building some resiliency in here. So what we've got and separating out the management traffic from the iSCSI and mirroring. So what we've got here is vSwitch zero, the management network. And you can see there it's on that uh, VM NIC zero physical adapter. Um, and this is our management interface. We then created two uh, V switches, V switch one and V switch two. And this is for our labeled as iSCSI one and iSCSI two. This is for our iSCSI and mirroring traffic to go down. We've got 10 gig networking. We're doing back to back networking, particularly useful for customers with lots of edge sites that perhaps don't have that 10 gig switching capability on the sites. We can do back to back networking. And so we have this closed network, if you like, on this 192.168 address. Again, this is exactly the same on second host. Okay, so vSwitch 1, 192.168, 1.23, this will be 2.23. And so when we de deploy out our VSA, our VSA is gonna essentially have three IP addresses. It's gonna have a management IP address and two iSCSI um, IP addresses. So we've got our networking and storage. Uh, we can come back to the plugin here and we can deploy out our VSA onto that second host. So uh, this is all wizard based. So simply click on deploy a VSA onto host. And we get this welcome screen, click next. You can only deploy, there's only one host that I can deploy here. I could have multiple more sort of hosts in this cluster 
to select from, but I've only got this one. I already have a VSA on 81. And it's asking me for the root password to that host. So I'm just going to add in, click next, get this license agreement page. Uh, we just tick that there and click next. And then we need to give our VSA a host name. So keeping with the naming conventions, um, I'm going to give this host name SBESXI-VSA02. And I'm going to give it the local domain is TS. Dot dot com. Uh, sorry, dot com. Yes, yeah, storemoment.com. And we're going to deploy that onto the local data store. So we're going to click next. And this is where we're going to allocate um, the storage up to our VSA. Uh, and there's that 120 gig disk that we had which we're going to hand up as the, the capacity tier. So we don't need to do anything here. It's selected that for us, so we can click next. We then get the option, and because of the licensing that I've got here, I'm going to, this is spinning this, so I'm going to introduce an SSD cache. Recommendations here are 10%. So I am going to add that disk there, that 20 gig disk. So I'm going to enable SSD caching using a raw device mapping. So we're presenting both the capacity and this SSD flash up as a raw device mapping. Now we could, if we wanted to present this up as a VMDK, could have uh, created that from the data store, presented up a VMDK, but that's it, introducing an, an, another layer. So we're able to present the, that storage, that LUN up as a raw device mapping. That's what we're doing here. And we're gonna enable some memory caching. So our virtual storage appliance only needs one virtual CPU and one gigabyte of memory, but you can increase that memory up to a maximum of 32. So with spinning disks as the capacity tier, having an SSD cache to service both read and write IO, you by increasing the memory of the VSA, we can increase that read IO performance as well. I'm going to click next here. And this is where we come to the networking part. So we're going to give our VSA um, three IP addresses. Those are those network interfaces that we were talking about earlier. So I'm going to edit that. Now this is a management interface. So I'm going to untick the iSCSI and mirroring flags. I'm going to give this an IP address 10.10.128. Dot 120 at management range. Subnet mask is fine. Default gateway 10.10.128.254. .10 and then let's just check that's correct. Yeah. And then I'm going to give that, let's put a DNS server in there. 10.10.128.10. .10 .10 and we're going to click OK there. I'm then going to configure the iSCSI interfaces. So we're going to untick the management flag. Now I could separate the iSCSI out on iSCSI 1 and have mirroring on iSCSI 2. It's low balance, so I'm going to keep those two flags ticked. And this is on that 192 address. So the IP addresses I've got are 192.168.1.24. And we'll leave everything else the same. And this one's going to be 2.24. So 192.168.2. Let's just double check. We have everything. And so just for information on The other VSA will be on 1.23 and 2.23. Let's just double check. 
sorry, 1.22 and 2.22. So we've got 1.24, 2.24, VSA 2 and VSA 1. The iSCSI IPs were 1, uh, 1.92, 1.68, 1 1.22 and 2.22. So we're going to click OK there. Um, and we're going to click Next. That all looks fine. Next, let's put the NTP server in. 1.10.128.10. Next, uh, and I'm going to grab a license key, which I have over here. Copy that in. White noise now. Now, if you had um, a proxy server to connect out, this, you can select this and configure and put the proxy server details in there. We don't need this for the purposes of this demo. So I'm going to click next. And this is where we give the VSA a password. So one, two, three, four, two, three, four. And then we get a summary of what we need to, uh, what we've just configured here. We always tick this keep VSA on deployment failure. So if I've made any mistakes or errors in configuration and the deployment fails, I'd have to go through this, this wizard all over again. This, by doing this, the deployment will happen and it means I can get to the VSA via a management console, which I will show once the deployment has finished. So I'm gonna click finish now. And you can see there it started to create, it's created that object over here on the left hand side, created VSA02 object, and it's going to run a number of tasks, which are going to take a few minutes to, to do. So sit tight and I'll be back very shortly. Okay, uh, we can see now that that virtual VSA02 has deployed out. Uh, as you can see from the bottom there, it's all completed. And we now have um, that VS VSA powered on. Now, during the deployment, I mentioned that we ticked that box to keep that uh, VSA on deployment failure. This is where we can come into that management console and just check to see how our deployment has gone. So I've clicked on that and um, can come in here, can see that status is normal, which is good. It's applied the license key. Um, it's, there's loads of informational messages there. No warnings or errors, which is a good sign. But let's say that I had uh, misconfigured one of the network interfaces. I can come in here and, and make the necessary changes or perhaps the default gateway was incorrect. I can come in here and change all of those things. Various ping tests, trace routes you can do, all from this console. So that lo looks all good to me. So now we have an environment where we have both our VSAs deployed. We can now create some highly available storage being managed by those VSAs between the two hosts. Now there are different ways of doing it. From the plugin here, we've got the manage the VSAs here. I've already got VSA one open, but you can get to the management URL. I have that VSA up here. So I could go to target and I could create um, a target here, put the target name in, the size, enable mirroring, and then I could set select the initiators, a local initiator and its partner and I can create my target that way. But the simplest way when you've got the plugin involved is you can go to manage storage and we could create the storage here. And this takes you through a wizard where you can create your data store name, size, work your way through, select your witness, whether you want caching, if you're sharing it, which hosts you're sharing it between. And then you just simply click on that and it will create that target. The alternative 
to, to doing it from here, right on the beginning of getting started at the Storm Magic plugin here, there's an option here, create a shared data store. It takes you through the same process, the same wizard. So that's how to deploy a VSA from the Storm Magic plugin. I hope that's been useful. Um, look forward to seeing you again. Thanks for watching.